Hello everyone. So here's the new blender and everybody loves it. It's appealing because it looks pretty, I think. That's basically it. Most of the things that are in blender, everything changed, the shortcuts changed, and the workflow changed. And not always for not all for the better, I think. However, yeah, EV, the real-time rendering is great. But uh, yeah, as for the shortcut keys and, and the tools used, they're a bit more elaborate in some areas. And I wanted to fix that with this video and see how to make it work like old, if possible. So that's what this video is going to be about. I did a tutorial, two hours long, about, well, most of the modeling facets about Blender 2.7 and once I was finished with that, they came out with a stable version of 2.8, of course. So now I have to start all over again, you would say. Not really. But I'm not going to download the regular Blender 2.8. I would like to run Blender 2.7 and 2.8 side by side. How I'm going to do that is as follows. Because if you install the regular installer blender, it removes the old blender version and it replaces it with this one. And then, uh, well, you will have to deal with Blender 2.8, the all kinds of new settings, new interface. I'm not going to do that. Looking for Blender 2.79. Well, no, not really. I'm going to look at the entire download. Here's the releases list. And uh, if I scroll down, you can download Blender 2.8 here. And I'm not going to use the installer. I'm going to download the zip file, the compressed file. This one doesn't need an installation. You just extract the files and you can just start Blender 2.8. So, well, I already downloaded it, of course, so I don't have to do this. You just store it at a specific location and with me, it's already there, it's right here, Blender 2.8, and all I have to do is I'm going to open it, and I'm going to put it in my program files, at the C drive, right there, so I'll just left click and drag, and put it in here, to program files, continue. It will be busy for a while. Well, looks like it's almost done. Um, I noticed that many people, since this new Blender version came out, uh, decided to use Blender instead of, for instance, AutoCAD. It has the same kind of interface or something, but people are really going crazy about this new Blender. And I do not see any real big improvements, except maybe EV if you're really into design and uh, you would like to have real-time rendering well that's nice that's really interesting though but other than that and probably the whole process of textures is, has improved uh, I have no experience with that at the moment but well we'll see uh, but yeah most of all uh, there are some things where I would say that they try to fix what's not broken you know, there's a couple of tools in the old Blender. Yeah, that works a little better, I think, in some aspects. So I would like to tweak this new Blender to work like 2.7. And uh, it's possible. So if you're interested in this that sort of thing, then uh, I'd suggest you stay watching. And uh, I'll show you some tweaks. So now that it's done, I'll just move over to my program files. Blender. This is Blender 2.8. And we can just start this little one thingy over here. But before I do, I'm going to just make a shortcut in my desktop. I just right click Blender.exe. And it's already there, of course, because I previously installed it already. Just remove this one. Okay, I'm just going to right click and move this over here, release, and then create shortcut. And I'm going to rename it, it's going to be Blender280, enter. 
So, I don't need this anymore. I could just start it as an administrator, but I think it's already doing that. So I'll just double click. And this will be a while, since it's the first time startup that uh, that's how. Anyway, um, let's see. They've been really nice to incorporate 2.7 as well. First of all, spacebar is going to be my search tool. I'm used to clicking right for selecting things, so I'll just stay with that. And now I'm going to select the shortcuts for Blender 2.7. So this is this is an improvement in my opinion so far that the shortcuts remain the same mostly anyway I'm going to click next and just click besides the splash screen and here we are the new blender now first off before you before we do anything if you missed the, this option in your installation you could also just just go to edit preferences user preferences or press ctrl alt u there is no Ctrl Alt U. That, that should be Ctrl Alt U. Right click, add shortcut, move mouse, Ctrl Alt U. There you go, user preferences. I just click this, and as you can see, I'm in Blender, and that should be Blender 2.7. On the left, I selected Key Map, by the way. Blender. I select the search for the spacebar, I standardly right click and I use Blender 2.7 shortcut keys. So there we are, it's the same kind of thing. And now I'll just say save preferences on the bottom left. And then from then on you can always use Ctrl Alt U for, th for this section here. And most of the shortcut keys in Blender 2.7 have been transferred to this new Blender version. Otherwise you would well, I, I went almost crazy, like, for the first time I installed this, I just, no way, I'm not going to work with Blender 2.8, it's terrible. But now, I tweaked it so much that it kind of, its functionality is actually almost the same as the previous version regarding shortcut keys anyway. So, yeah, I'm pretty content right now with Blender 2.8. So let's see what we can do about this thing. First off, I'm just going to edit mode. Modeling is the most important part, I suppose. And if I press the W, you get a very familiar menu now, all of a sudden. With the regular Blender 2.8, you didn't get that, but now it's back again. That's lovely. Ctrl F, face menu, it's there. Ctrl E, edge menu is there. Ctrl V, vertex menu is there. And from there you can, well, almost have access to most of the tools that are available in, bl in Blender anyway. However, um, there's also this toolbar here on the left. You can press T if it's not there. And I'm just going to move it over a bit like so. And there's also the names for it, like with the previous Blender. But it's spiced up a bit. That's basically it. So that's all. Uh, I'm just going to move it like this. And, and there is a little bit of change there, which is, well, mostly the spin tool. I could take a front view. Snap my cursor here, snap menus of shift S, cursor selected, I select this one, press Alt R to spin it, and nothing happens. Why? Well, if you go to the bottom left, you see this little menu here, all of a sudden, I'll just open it up, it says angle zero degrees. Okay, so I'll make it 90 degrees, and let's say six steps, and that's that, right? Now, I just move it away, snap cursor to this selection here. I'm going to spin this one. Alt R, nothing happens. That's quite annoying. Uh, Blender used to remember the settings. Like I just go, on, no, let me just new file, then like so. Snap cursor selected. Now let me remove that. Pivot point 3D cursor, front view. Snap cursor selected, Alt R. It's 90 degrees, no, well, I'll just make it 45 degrees, and uh, three steps, for instance, like so. If I select this one now, press Alt-R, it remembered exactly what it was, and I can just use it like 
anyway now blender this this blender version doesn't do it you each time you have to spin you have to alter these settings once again and I, that's quite annoying so I did made some changes there let's go back to the user preferences Control alt u here we go and I'm just gonna type the name spin to search for it and in mesh spin there is this little button and you actually have to type in the angle or the steps here let's say for instance so let's make this 90 degrees six steps I'll just remove the six steps like so let's see what happens this time next delete edges X delete vertices alt R now it's 90 degrees and six steps that's great so let's make it eight step 25 steps for instance like so I press alt R once again and it rem rem it remembered so the steps is fine the angle however it will always ang it will always do 90 degrees right now unfortunate but it's true so there is a little bit of change which is actually something they fixed what was not broken unfortunately but this is as far as spin uh, spin tool what uh, re in regards to the screw tool there is no screw tool on this side on the side here there are a couple of tools missing I suppose but the screw tool is one of them that I really yeah I miss like extrude extrude like this for instance and I would like to screw this round I can't so let's see I'm going back to the user preferences I'm just gonna delete this search query here and I'm going to look for well 3d view mesh mesh global I'm going to scroll down all the way down here spin tool is in there now and I'm going to add a new tool I'm opening it up for a moment and I'm going to select here mesh dot screw it's in here now now it exists so let's assign a key for it I would say alt R is um, alt R is spin control R is uh, subdivide in a loop so let's make it shift R I just click this here shift R wait a minute shift R R and shift okay like so now I have the screw tool here uh, oh yeah let's make it uh, one turn or not let's find out so I'll just pre press shift R and it's screwing this thing one steps turns one let's make it two now I'll move back um, to this area shift R getting used to it turns to so it remembers the settings as well uh, screw tool is there too now it works so that's the way it, it, it works with uh, with these settings you can also just uh, right click on any menu item that's missing a shortcut like for instance uh, let's say uh, so well let's change the shortcut select for for instance select more or less select more is cultural numpad plus but what if you don't have a numpad suppose you have a laptop and you don't have numpad on it I'll just right click on it and you have a couple of uh, ch left click sh sh change shortcut move my mouse over it and then I have to press a key well I'm just going to press the control key and mouse wheel scroll up select more mouse control scroll up select less change shortcut control short scroll down so now if I select anything I can just increase selection like this and apparently we're well let's take a look at Z and uh, out here you can just switch to orthographic mode for instance like so you can also just turn the view like this you can pan the view holding the just left click and drag stuff like that you can f view from the camera uh, stuff like that 
but uh, yeah I usually short use shortcuts for that so who cares about those things anyway I screwed this thing but there are overlapping vertices at the same spot here so what do I do now let's uh, select a couple of these vertices like so and remove doubles well if I press the W there is no more remove doubles here that's one of those options it's included it's moved to somewhere else alt M merge merge and it has an option included by distance it says below remove zero vertices but if I select this option unselected it moved remove three because I have three vertices selected here then the other vertices that are, that are at the same spot are removed so that's pretty simple so I can just say select more scrolling my wheel and what's going on or nothing okay alt M by distance remove 25 vertices that's that now there shouldn't be any more double vertices on the same location however I'm in box selection mode right now I can just left click and drag to, to box select that's basically it I don't need to press the B well that's terrible isn't it anyway um, I could just also move to for instance bevel mode let me just select these for instance X delete vertices uh, bevel mode yeah let's bevel this edge I just have to left click and drag and, and beveling and there you go I can fill in the width and all that however control B still works just fine now I can just type in 0 0.5 on the keyboard enter and now it's at 0 0.5 beveled and I can still uh, increase a couple of segments here for instance uh, the profile can be just inwards or outwards like so 0.25 0 oh, that's a lot 0.2 point one so what may what would make a perfect circle here point one is that a perfect circle I don't think so but let's see duplicate rotate oh yeah 3d cursor like so rotate oh, that's not a perfect circle either control B bevel hmm let's say duplicate and two three four four rotate 45 degrees a B control B point four it's not a perfect circle just yet point zero point fifteen. 0.05 ah. so I can't make a perfect circle like this I will have to do it differently so I just remove these X delete vertices B alt R ah. B alt R uh, let's make it uh, six steps and there you go now these are still overlapping there's another option here uh, I have to remove doubles once again these are still overlapping here I can change that and usually there was this thing here in the taskbar where you could say okay uh, automatically remove the doubles it's no longer there of course it's been moved as well 
Now let's take a look first at this little thing here. Um, if I just uh, open, expand this window a bit, this is the properties panel. And just let me, let me just uh, join area upwards, like so. This is the properties panel on this side, and you have these options here: object, material, add modif modifiers, and stuff like this. Um, the new Blender has the same, except it's now on the side right here, and the buttons are a little bit different. But it's it's here. You have the material still here. You've got the modifiers right there so it's practically the same except the top one and maybe there's one more or so context render output I don't know anyway the top one has options auto merge now if I repeat this last action let's say I think I should be able to do that but uh, okay uh, let's just control add uh, let's X delete vertex faces delete faces top view let me see Z Z Z uh, Z Z okay top view B let's do this again Alt R and just remember remember the settings at least the steps and now oh press G, I'm holding down control, left click, and now they're gone. Okay, anyway, let's fix this area. Fix, let's fix this area, fix, there we go. Now, for instance, there are a few more changes, but one of them I've been staring at myself, and I've been really driving myself crazy with this one. For instance, I would like to know the length of this edge. Well, it used to be in the, if I press N, you have some transform properties here, that's it. It's divided in, in several sections now. If I go to the old Blender version, I press N. Like so. There's a whole lot more information here. And if I wanted to select an edge length here, I just find it here in the mesh display. So just let me in the mesh display like here and uh, length and that's it it's in a uh, it's in this panel here anyway that has moved as well of course it's no longer here any any longer why 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 well there is an overlay section uh, up on top here these two circles there's an overlay section here if I click this arrow uh, I could show for instance Z axis I could just remove the, the floor for instance uh, remove the grid. If I take the front view, there is no longer a grid. So there's there's things that you can view here. All object origins, uh, whatever. If I scroll down, here's the edge length, so that you no need to be searching anymore. And I'm gonna press N because it's just annoying. So that's basically it. That's those are the biggest changes I suppose if, when it concerns modeling at least uh, you still have uh, edge face menus selection stuff like that oh yeah about the spinning you also can click the spin tool now I'm in spinning mode and I will remain in spinning mode I can just uh, keep editing like I do always extrude like so and uh, inset the eye inset like so, extrude, you can do a lot of stuff, but I'm still in spin mode. So if I just uh, snap my cursor here for instance, top view, I can just press on a spin, and I can just spin it like this, for instance, right? However, I can only spin in the Z direction. Well, that's not entirely true, I can also just twist this area a little bit like so uh, whatever uh, anyway yeah I would like to see the other directions as well so I'm going to view tool settings there's a couple of things here as well 
and I'm not, not sure about everything just yet. Oh yeah, this is uh, mirror X topology. Uh, well, anyway, um, yeah, options, auto merge. It's also also there. Well, that's uh, now it's all, all there all all of a sudden. Well, just great. So I don't need this anymore. Now it's in the taskbar. Uh, let's include these. I hold down shift, pressing these three, and now I can spin in any direction. So I just can select this one, spin in the x direction, and quickly now spin in the z direction. Oh, that's just great though. Just let me uh, just include these as well. And now spin in the Z direction. Hold on control, I can snap to 5 degrees like so. Um, increase the steps to 24 for instance, like so. Yeah. So that's an, an, a nice tool, but it, it doesn't, it's not always required and it's cluttering up the screen quite a lot, so I prefer Alt-R mostly. So now I switch back to the regular cursor, I just click here, cursor in the select box. Now other than that, I can just, uh, for instance, say selections, lasso selection. No, it doesn't work. Circle selection does. Now that's wonderful. Let me remove these edge lengths. So, if I hold down this one, just click it and select this one, the regular selection arrow. Now I can do lasso selection as well. Control, and then I can just select lasso selection. Like so. Control shift, you can remove things with lasso selection. So you could still use lasso selection, C for circle selection and B for box selection anyway. So that's great. And the shortcut keys all almost work the same right now, like, like they did in, blend, in the previous Blender. So I hope this helps you out a bit with things. Oh yeah, let's just move to orthographic view. That's another button here. Or camera view. Or just orthographic. I can pan the view. I just left click and drag. I can just rotate the view with this. If you're, uh, if if this is suit is more suitable for you, I just left middle click my mouse and drag for rotating the view, scrolling for zooming the view. I hold down shift middle click for panning the view. That's much. I don't like to move my mouse to all kinds of menus to do things. I like, I, I happen to like uh, these uh, shortcut keys. So loop select, uh, ring select. Uh, loop select, it all still works. Um, about uh, layers. Let's say I just select this stuff here. Select more. It didn't work, now it does work. What is this? Oh yeah. I have to select control. P separate selection. This is a different object now. And now I would like to move this in a different layer. Well, to be honest, there are no more layers. But don't worry, they just named it differently. There's still layers, but now they called collections. How do we do that? Well, just like we did with layers, I'm just going to press M, move to a new collection instead of a layer. Collection 2. Fine. Let's do that. And now it's in collection 2. And you have these eyes here. I'm just gonna close these up for a moment. And you can just select which collection you would like to see. Holding down control, remove all the other. Okay, let's just say for instance duplicate and move this to collection, uh, new collection 3. Like so. If I hold down control, it removes all the other control collections. Holding down shift, you can include the collections as well. With these little eyes next to these, each of these collections. But there's more. 
about it. If I just spray it, press spacebar and I type collection. collection. Here is a couple of shortcut keys and some stuff stuff you can do with collection. Select same. I have no idea what it all is, but uh, you could maybe mess around with that a bit or not. So move to collection. Uh, it can all be also be moved. So if I just select this one, move to collection two, it's out there, and uh, this one move to collection three, and this move to collection one. So that's basically it. And then uh, yeah, that's another little feature that I found. Other than that, well, it mostly works the same. And then you've got EV or text uh, real time uh, real time rendering. There's, that's this last button here: uh, view shade port, viewport shading. Now it's rendering it, but you need you, know, you need to be able to uh, have the proper uh, graphics card, I suppose. If I just move this. You can see shadows on top of it and stuff. It's really an interesting. It's re it's interesting. So basically, yeah. And that's a nice way of editing things. If you really like that, I'm more into well, solid view, like so, for instance. So I hope that uh, you've learned something. I hope it helps you out a bit. And uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon once again.